let us talk about Laurel's theorem at this stage. And after we talk about the session of the statement, we're going to do some examples which will solidify, hopefully, the understanding and the application of this important theorem in complex analysis. So this is the statement of the theorem. Let f be a function which is defined on the complex plane and specifically in a region in which we are interested in understanding the function and that region is called to be R. And this function f is analytic, that means f satisfies number one, Cauchy-Riemann equations, and number two, all the partial derivatives of f are continuous, which makes up the necessary and sufficient conditions for a function to be analytic. All right, so there is a function f of z, which is defined everywhere, uh, not everywhere, at least in the region R, and R is an annular region, that means it's a ring-like region, uh, which is confined by two circles, C1 and C2, and uh, C1 has a radius R1, which is the bigger radius, and C2 has a radius R2, which is a smaller radius. And these two circles are concentric, that means they have a common center, which is called A. And the function we have chosen to call f of z is analytic inside the region R and on its boundary as well. So then for each point in R, we can expand the function f of z in an infinite series, which looks a lot like the Taylor series, except for the fact that we have the series terms going from negative infinity to positive infinity. In other words, it has all the integer powers of z minus a, not just the positive integer powers. And here we have the formula with the coefficients of z minus a to the power n. And this formula is given separately for two different cases. One is for coefficients where z minus a have negative powers and for the coefficients where z minus a have positive powers. So this is the basic statement and it can be proven. The proof shall be on another video, which is not relevant to this one. However, we shall see some application of the Lorentz series, which is this series written in here. So Lorentz series is an infinite series, which is defined within an annulus. And what we hope is the Lorentz series is at least convergent within this specified region. So let us see some examples of this theorem. As promised, we're going to do some examples of Lorentz series. And more specifically, we'll see how to find the radius of convergence of this series. So our first series is this, where we have to expand the function about the point z equal to zero. And immediately we see that at z equal to zero, this function has a singularity. But in order to be explicit, let us first look at the expansion. And we know for all z, we can expand e to the power z about z equals zero. And what we find is the following. So we have one over z to the power six, sum over in starting from zero to infinity, we have one over n factorial, and then we have z to the power n. So if we expand this, we find this is going to be one over z to the power six, and we have the usual Taylor series for e to the power z, which is given by one plus z plus z squared divided by 2 factorial plus z cubed divided by 3 factorial and so on and so forth. So you understand that if we bring the 1 over z to the power 6 we have 1 over z to the power 6 plus 1 over z to the power 5 plus 1 over 2 z to the power 4 plus 1 over 
six. Well, let me keep it to be in the factorial form so that I don't have to calculate this trivialities. So three factorial z cubed plus one over four factorial z squared plus one over five factorial z plus one over six factorial plus one over seven factorial z plus and so on and so forth. So this is the desired Lorentz expansion about z equal to zero. And now it is time for us to find out the radius of convergence for this. So how can we find that out? Well, what we do is we take the nth term and we take the n plus one term and we take the ratio and then we set the limit as n tends to infinity. And this becomes one over r, where r is the radius of convergence. So how can this act? Well, let's go to another space. So we find that u n plus one, which is the n plus one term, is given by this formula right here, and the n term u n is given by this formula right here. So we have u n plus one divided by u n, and then we take the modulus and then set the limit, n tends to infinity. This gives us, well, z to the power n plus one minus six divided by z to the power n minus six, and then we have n factorial divided by n plus one factorial. And then we set the limit, n tends to infinity. So n factorial and n plus one factorial cancel most of the term except for the term n plus one. What happens here? Well, this term cancels this term except for a z, so we find z divided by n plus 1 modulus with the limit setting from n tends to infinity, and that sets us to, well, as n gets to infinity, this number gets smaller and smaller and eventually goes to 0 for any finite z. And this is given by 1 over r. So we have r equals infinity, that means the series we have just derived is convergent everywhere except for the point z equals zero. And this is how we find the radius of convergence. I think this video is getting too long. So before going out, I'd like to mention two specific points, and I want you to be uh, very very focused on these two points because they're important uh, normally in your exam. The first one is that the nature of this singularity. Of course, at z equal to zero, this object has singularity because e to the power z is analytic everywhere, even at z equal to zero. But it's a ratio function, so the denominator is zero at z equal to zero, so therefore it's a singularity. The nature of the singularity means what is the lowest power of z, or z minus a, where a is the point about which you're expanding, is the lowest, and in this case it's minus 6. So minus 6 is the lowest power, okay, uh, of this expansion. And therefore this pole, this singularity, is called a pole of order 6. A pole of order 6. So if the lowest power is uh, z to the power negative n, then it's a pole of order n. And if it goes in the negative direction all the way to negative infinity, that means the lowest of the lowest is uh, z to the power negative infinity with a uh, non-zero coefficient, then it's called an essential singularity. So in this particular case, 
this function has a pole pole of order order six okay at z equal to zero all right so that's number one number two uh, typically, when we talk about pole, we talk about the point uh, which is finite uh, and has a singularity. But a point at infinity, specifically z equal to infinity, can also have an infinity. And this can be understood by taking z tends to infinity. And, and z to the power infinity is also a pole, uh, which is an essential singularity, but we don't want to... I uh, mentioned that unless it is specifically asked. The final thing that I'd like to ask you about uh, this series is what is the residue of this series? And the residue is the coefficient of 1 over z, which in this case, so residue a minus 1 is 1 over 5 factorial. So these are the two important questions. Number one, the nature of the singularity, which is the order of the pole, and in this case it is 6, and the residue, which in this case is 1 over 5 factorial. This video ends here. I'll see you in the next video with more examples.